Let's jump right into the news and see the changes coming to Lost Ark in a region. The May slay your way till Elgacia. Update arrives tomorrow in Arcasia. Downtime will begin at the normal time, 3 a.m. EST. Uh, 12 a.m. PST, expect to last four hours. We got the Slayer. We got new progression events. We got Ebony Cube. We got Event Guardians. Legion Raid Balance Changes. Quality of life stuff, new cosmetics. This update should make everyone's life better in Arcasia. Find the full list of content, events, skins, and other updates below. We got the Punisher build. It's called Punisher and Predator. Which one are you guys playing? I, I'm playing, I think I'm playing Punisher. I'm going spec class. I honestly, I thought I was playing the Swiftness one because I really like Swiftness characters, but I'm not gonna lie. Zeal's definitely talked me up hard. He talked me up real, real hard. But I think I, I think I decided to go up on Punisher and I better not get disappointed. And hopefully Slayer doesn't get nerfed a bunch. We have the KR balance patch. Well, the balance PTR in Korea starts on Friday. Well, technically Thursday for us. It might get nerfed right away or it might not get nerfed at all. Uh, we also get Ebony Cube. Bro, I ran like four hours of boss rushes last night. I met some guy named Sleepy Joe Biden and the guy was just sitting in the corner not doing anything. But yeah, so anyways, the cube, the Ebony Cube is basically just gonna be like a lot better nowadays, right? It's gonna be a combination of boss rush. It's gonna be a combination of cube, right? And you're gonna get like everything in there. You're just not gonna get as many gems. And that's why everyone's like running all their boss rushes right now before the update comes out. And it's only gonna be like three to four floors. You're gonna get like bonus bonus rooms still and stuff. So you can't do like times three with the new cube. You can only do times one, but you know, maybe in the future they'll put times three in at some point. Uh, Vent Guardian. Oh, we're actually getting a Vent Guardian coming back. I didn't know this. Uh, this is like, this is, this is like good. Like, I don't know. It gets like good math and stuff like that. I wonder if the vendor got updated to be more current, how, how it works. So you, it's basically it's like rotation of guardian, like it, ro it rotates, right? And you go in there and like you, you do like different checks, right? It teaches you like destruction, stagger, like, you know, like weak point stuff. And then when you do the check, it drops like these orbs that give you like a super buff. And then you do, it's really easy. You just like kill the guardian instantly, but it's good for new players because it teaches them like basic fundamentals of the game. Like it teaches them how to do like stagger and destruction. And it introduces like more basic stuff. If you're like a long-term player, you're gonna go in there, you're gonna do little checks, you're gonna get the huge buff and like, you're just gonna have like super damage moving speed and everything else like that. Uh, progression events. Oh, so we're getting a new progression event too. Uh, a back end change arrives that follows, uh, wait, wait, it allows for multiple progression events to run simultaneously. Thanks to this update and event, Punica Power Pass, the Hyper Express Plus Two will accompany the launch of Slayer on May 10th and run until August 9th. Wait, Aeromancer confirmed August 9th. Is that, is that, is that what I'm reading here? Uh, while there won't be a new story express, the existing event can be used with Slayer if you haven't designated a character already and is active until June 14th. The other events that launch with the artist in March will continue until their planned end date of June 14th. Uh, they're giving us a Punica Power Pass. It's a 1340 pass, but the nice thing is it doesn't require Bird of a Friend to be completed. So if you like, uh, if you have like a long standing Steam account or if you played Lost Ark before, and you have trusted status, you could just use this on a new character and it makes it getting into the game really, really easy. Uh, in addition to that, a new 1460 Hyper Express event, which is which is good, right? You have the dead zone is what, like four, it was 1445 to 1490, so now it's gonna be 1460 to 1490. And we don't actually know what's gonna be in this Hyper Express in terms of rewards. However, uh, we kind of do know because it launched in Korea like a year ago and we could like check out, these are like the rewards for each tier. So it should be like a 1340 reward, right? 1355, 1370, 1385, 1400. You just get like shards and like silver and you get like coins and stuff and you get fusion mats and you get leap stones. 1415, 1430, 1445, and 1460. I hope we keep this. It basically gives you three level five tripods for free at the end. It gives you gold, yeah, yeah. And that, that, that's all the bonus of the 1460. And then once you finish, you get the end completion box. We don't know. If this is what will be in our version, but this is what Korea got. It's like 4 million silver, 10,000 gold, 50 accessories, a selector pack, legendary engravings, like 25 armor books, five weapon books, uh, little packs, 500 great honor leap stones, more fusion materials, 70 shard bags, sailing coins, pirate coins, relic stuff, legendary rapport stuff. 
a bunch of card packs and stuff. Card XP. You get six consoles also. I wish. Uh, yeah, this is like what what's in what we should get and the stuff. If you guys want to see it, I'll post it in there. And even at that, you won't hit 1475. If you have decent RNG, you should be able to get clown as a fresh player with the rewards. Now, if you have bad RNG, maybe not, but you should be able to go from 1460 to 1475 and be able to do clown. That's that. Uh, and then also they got engraving support, so you don't even have to buy like items for your character. You can wait and you just run four by three to start off with. And then you just get like the proper stats and everything else there. The one thing I don't like about the engraving support, this is like a little QOL thing I'm just nitpicking here. I really wish you could set up presets for it where you don't have to change between your chaos build and your raid build, right? You can just like set up preset, then they'll auto swap for you. That would be so nice. Uh, competitive proving ground season three starts. So uh, PVP season three, uh, what do they do? The amount of courage coins earned last season has been reset to zero. You can once again earn PVP tier points your tiers get rewards at the end did you get you guys know like the grand master players at the end they get like ten thousand blue crystals it's essentially like two hundred thousand gold reward but what they did for grand master is they made it like more exclusive so instead of rank one to thirty it's now rank one to ten so there's only gonna be there's only gonna be ten there's only gonna be 10 grand masters in existence. And the master is only gonna be top 100 and top 200. Honor rewards purchase in season three will be available. I do know, bro, there's like a guy that played on NA on NA East. He had like six of the top spots. It's like it's like this one guy that really, really just likes PvP. All he does is PvP. He is gonna take six of these spots, I think. Also, in addition to all that, progression updates. What progression updates did we get, boys? Remove the transfer requirement based on number of characters and completed continent. Oh, so this is just knowledge transfer stuff. Transfer limit removed, so you just do as many as you want. Instead of eight hours, it's like 10 seconds. That's longer than I typically last. Uh, added the Rowan continent to knowledge transfer, which probably a lot of people are gonna be very excited about. Upon completing knowledge transfer, rewards are now obtained without needing to enter the chamber of mind. Transfer fee is adjusted, removes stronghold level 15 the requirement for the knowledge transfer. Oh, so you don't even have to have a juice up stronghold. It's just like a stronghold level one, you can knowledge transfer. That's kind of good for like new players that are like starting out, right? And like establishing their uh, currency earning roster. I would say that's a W, right? That'll definitely help new players. It's literally bait for naive people. Yeah, some people just want to go to Rowan and PvP on their character. They don't care about like the card pack rewards or yeah, like any of like the currency rewards. New player guardian raid improvements. Uh, and level one to five guardian raid player will see free battle items relevant to the guardian. So you don't have to choose, right? You don't have to like go to max roll and be like, I need whirlwind grenades. I need destruction grenades. I need dark grenades. I need like all this other stuff. You're just gonna go and yeah, the game's just gonna give you free battle items to use. I wonder what, I wonder what potions are they gonna give new player? They're gonna give them like purple. They're gonna give you blue one. They're gonna green pots. I wonder, I wonder what they're gonna give the new player. They're just gonna be like free purple pots and stuff. Anyway, so yeah, th that that's nice because it helps alleviate the burden of the knowledge required to play Lost Ark in the early segments of the game. There's gonna be some new honing updates. So I actually, I knew about this. I'm not gonna lie, boys. The current basic honing growth boost will now be expanded to 1460 item level. This is really, really good for new players, but right, it helps them establish a, a better gold earning roster so they don't far, uh, fall as far behind. Uh, current honey XT 40% reduction uh, between 1445 and 1460 will be overwritten by the boost. Increased uh, T3 level 1340 gear, 16 to 17 success rate. Increased level 18 base success rate by 5%. Decreased XP requirements, so that's like silver and shards and remove the tier 3 1340 gear 1618 gold price honing cost. Basically it's gonna help out new players or even players like starting new classes get caught up, but more exciting content. Uh, general progression updates, silver and leapstone, loot increase for tier one and two chaos dungeon, that's nice. Honestly, with I did this in, uh, I did this in Europe recently on EU Central, with all the events and things that they give you for free, you spend like not even one day in the early tiers anymore. It's so quick. Yeah, and ultimately what the honing changes are, it, it almost gives you like 1475 for free. So people will be able to like get into the get in the game and do three Legion raids, right? You're able to do Vaulton, Vicus, and Clown. And Clown's important to get into and learn because 
you need to start getting your boost. If you'd only do like Clown Gate 1 and 2, that's fine. Good Clown Gate 3 is obviously a lot harder on item level and like with 4 by 3 and like the free pass stuff. But you can start like accumulating and getting your horns needed uh, or your trumpets needed to boost your gear up a little bit. The idea behind like making the game like more new player accessible and adding new player events is so new players also play with new players. You get what I'm saying? New players shouldn't be trying to sneak into a 1575 clown speed run los 30 required grell hard mode pet all deathless titles you know what i mean yeah the idea the idea of like new player events and like making the game more inviting to new players is so new, more new makokos play and they're playing together they're not just running with established players getting uh carried or bust you know you can also join a teaching rate and stuff like that general progression uh what else general and qol updates over here added stronghold mood function six type of moods added what are this structure skins you guys like making like uh, your own personalized little house and hideout? I don't see just put all my statues in my stronghold. I uh, I don't really, I have not really customized my stronghold yet. I know a lot, of, there's people that do enjoy this. They make like a nice little quaint, cozy stronghold and their downtime when they're not playing, they just don't AFK near the honing vendor. They just go to their little their little home. They just chill out, they have some coffee. They, they listen to a nice ambient music and they're just vibing out unlock the manor third floor uh dispatch station revamp only as and ss upgrades exist now oh, for your for uh your dispatch stuff okay so this is basically uh, it just they just made dispatching a little better now you can also check the results and claim the worth of all completed dispatch miss missions at once revamp design themes filters favorites and search bar than added a new theme's been added also moonlit moonlit magic tree guardian theme charge and rooney play theme cozy forest shelter theme spring trail theme fall trail theme winter trail theme and maze theme uh, the entertainment menu can now be used while inside the manor chain view stuff just like a, a whole bunch of quality life stuff for your stronghold guild updates what are they doing here i'm guessing just uh, weekly guild missions to match ebony cube weekly task tri team deathmatch updated to try proving grounds okay co-op battle stuff Increase guild raid proxima weekly guild bloodstones. I wish I wish Lost Ark had better guild design. The fact that you don't like just have like one guild for your characters really be like the limitation and I think it's mostly just due to guild versus guild stuff. Like you just have like all your characters usually in like different guilds and you don't really have and like you're constantly swapping between your characters. So you don't really have that guild camaraderie that you usually build in other games, right? Like that social part of an MMO. At some point, I would like to see like a total guild revamp where maybe uh, you can elect to put like your entire like roster in one guild. So it's like your account name or something like that. And like, you just have all your characters in one guild. And then you can just like opt out of that. If you wanna have your characters in a different guild, you can do that also. I, I just, there's just too many li limitations for Lost Star guilds, especially the guild member size. Oh, there's trade skill updates. Nice. Uh, there are new nodes, resources that be gathered in respective wow. zones. And grant materials used to purchase secret pouches and secret trade in the Punica. Rainy and Southburn Evan. The new trade skill quest is available with six new world tree leaves. New resource are Platinum, Kandari Rabbit, and Ponchi Fish. Oh, and there's like an exchange for secret pouches and stuff. Badass. Gathering powder, uh, now which can be crafted at trade skill merchant in all city, that there is only secret powder offer which players can purchase multiple times between both Rainy and Evan and grant random trade skill materials when used. In addition to the mysterious green pouch, Rainy and Punica also have the rare chance to have either secret pouch, soft pouch, perchable with uh, wood blocks. Uh, they updated some UI UX stuff, plus search function, the search function helps autocomplete quest names while searching. Oh, did we got we finally got the ocean liner revamp? Change to a map UI can choose to add a list of ocean liners similar to old UI. You for both boarding and departure decrease to 10 second max. So yeah, this is this is nice. I've been hoping for this for a while. But I actually I actually use the ocean liner quite a bit to like traverse Arcasia. So just not having to wait there for like the, the what the one minute queue is really really nice. Uh, item codex updates. So. Just like the little in-game information center. Uh, revamp the UX for chests and items. Uh, the open button now automatically changes to close if there are no more chests of the respective type. 
within the player inventory, revamped alerts for accumulated item acquisitions such as honing shards and silver, added usage information for the codex. Uh, item tooltip update, that added an item tooltip, quick view system which can turn on or off in settings. This will talk about how much information displayed on gear items such as gear set bonus. So the default mode is set to full view. Also, if you just like, if you just don't want things to look as crowded, you can just simplify, simplified view. Uh, system settings UI friends, uh, friends UI update. If you set yourself to offline and friends UI, the tooltip will let you uh, tell how long you've been shown offline to your friends guildmates to warn you that appearing at the offline for too long could get you expelled from your guild. Update world map UI to better distinguish the lines between different continents. Added a jump filter option for wandering merchants. Chaos gate location tracker update on calendars. Gates will be shown as symbols. That's badass. And information regarding NPC their poor reward source will no longer be displayed. If the NPC the rapport is unlocked. Integrated dungeon UI, added status for gold loot and endgame content, added symbol for to designate endgame contents, remove boss rush, replace cube with ebony cube. So it's just like, it's just all combined into one and it's short, it's like a couple minutes long. Added endgame contents category and gold loot to the endgame content category to track which characters have collected. General updates, add a new track of daily login rewards, added the gate of paradise opens quests, uh, uncover some of the secrets of Algesha, add your repair to adventure, home to the Zions next month. Requisite quests include to the sound Hayden or Kadan and Tabula Rasa Wisdom Island. Change pheromone bomb battle items to uh, an essence. Oh, so uh, this. This is a big one. Guys, I actually knew about this one. Um, the drop rate of sidereal energy has been slightly increased. You might see it. You might see some sidereal energies tomorrow, boys. What? How much is slightly? Maybe maybe they doubled it. I, I don't know, man. To me, sidereal weapons are one of the coolest things in the game. I love the way they look. I love their powers. The big drawback of sidereal energies, probably they cost, they cost like two trailer parks, right? I could literally buy two whole trailers in Florida, a double wide, for the price of this weapon in the game. Like it actually, it's actually, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a double wide item. Okay, the map symbol for the gold shot NPC to be more easily distinguishable. It might just be a bunch of like a giant cash shot. I don't, I don't know what it's gonna be. It'd be a giant gold bar. Add an option to change the background while previewing skins and the skin storage. Uh, the health of boss level scarecrows, summon and Trixie and training center had been increased. Out of 10 new trophies, I think this is like new horizontal stuff. The return function on mail cannot be used when the mail has items attached. When the recipient of mail is changed, when being drafted, the attached items registered and the mail will be unregistered. You can no longer re-enter a chaos gate if you left without having participated in the battle. Deadeye and Gunslinger non-combat dance to the change. Guns are now stored while not in combat. And I believe it should be Weapon Glow too, right? So you just like holster your guns now instead of just running around with them all the time like a fucking maniac. Who, run, who the hell runs around with their guns in their hand all the time? No one does. They, they all, so you holster them at some point. People in Texas. God, that's not true. Enable 19 emotes for MVP uses. Oh, I wonder what all the new MVP emotes are gonna be then. It's like your little preset that you can set up like uh, on your little family photo screen. Add a Mimo function world map to add personal Mimos with your map. MVP motion settings uh, have been updated. Added a banish system for Adventure Island based on contribution, where a player will be banished after a warn uh, warning alert if no contribution is made after the alert. This is gonna be like a progressive thing. Like as the island goes on, you have to con 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 continue contributing, contributing because the Meta for a while how it's been as you go to an adventure island you get your base contribution and then people just afk and it's so fucking shitty because you're just trying to get in and out of these islands quickly and these people legitimately they get their base contribution they kill like their one thing and they just go afk in the corner and they let other people finish it and then it just doubles triples the time and for completion it's so bad so hopefully it does that like if you're if you're doing your adventure island you're doing your content or people have to contribute or continue to contribute through the duration of the event and not just get your your first hit and then just afk and watch netflix update the conditions for consecutive co-op quests on adventure islands due to the release of any cube five makoka challenges have been changed a uh, co-op battle revamp battle ready queue decreased from 90 seconds to 60 seconds for ironland blue dragon territory golden eagle battlefield stuff cool Target score is updated. We also got some store updates. First ever Western exclusive skin arrive alongside special launch skins for Slayer Advanced Class. To learn more about the new Arthentine Knight Rider skin tomorrow in a special behind the scene blog, find them showcase 
in the meantime below. They added, uh, we're getting these uh, and Korea doesn't have them. You guys like these skins? They're they're dyeable, right? So if you don't like the colors, you can't dye them. They're fugly, you guys don't like them. I hope my gun lancer has some assless chaps. These are the weapons, Death Blade Reaper, Shadow Hunter. They got some like gunner class stuff. I actually like the inside of the, the coats. It's very vibrant. It's almost like something that you would get printed on. Like if you go get like a custom suit or tux, I would probably use like this hat, this coat, and then I would use a mankini. Like my balls would just be hanging out. You know what I mean? God, it's strategic. It's called less resistance. It allows me to be more agile, right? If I just have like a bunch of baggy clothes, and I'm trying to fight demons, I'm not gonna move as quickly, not as agile. Gunslinger weapons, artillerist. I actually do like the artillerist weapon, sharpshooter. It kind of reminds me of like Overwatch skin for sharpshooter, like sharpshooter, machinist. It kind of reminds me of like tra Tracer Hanzo stuff. Martial artist skins. What are these called? Garter belts, right? Like a little garter belt. War Dancer, Scrapper. I do like the Scrapper fist though. That looks cool. The Neon Glaver weapons. Uh, I don't know if I like the Glaive weapons. I do like the Scrapper fist though. War Dancer, Striker, I don't play those anymore. Arcana stuff, Summoner weapon, Bard weapons. It's almost like you gave like, you have like a little kid or whatever and like you have a makeup kit and you're like, here, play with this. And you come back into the room and they just like, they just, they just, you're like, what the hell do you do to your face? And they're like, I don't know, I'm a kid, right? It's just like, it's really random, the customization over here. Artist weapon, honestly, the artist weapon does look pretty good though. Warrior class. Hey, I actually, I like the bionic arms. I like the bionic arms and the coat. I don't like the pants. I do like the combat boots too. I like the combat boots, but you wouldn't be able to, yeah. The way they have the costume set up, you wouldn't be able to use the combat boots with the bionic arms. You'd have to have the pants too, right? You had like the coat. Look at that Slayer weapon. That's a very, very bright Slayer weapon. I, like, I kind of like the Destroyer weapon too and the Gunlancer weapon there. And then the Hound Pet. Hound Pet looks cool too. Uh, this mount. Mm. I don't know what I think about this steed. What do you guys think about the steed? What do you guys think about, what do you, what do you guys, you guys like these mounts? I feel like, I feel like I would go, I would use another mount instead. I can't believe they gave us another horse though. Out of all things to give us, I like, I like the pet. The pet looks cool. We got too many ponies, man. You don't know, they, you don't know what they should have given us a mount for? Moki. We should have a fucking lizard mount. He like scurries across the fucking ground, right? And he's kind of like a chameleon. And so if he, if we had a chameleon Moki amount, it would make sense with all these vibrant colors. And then Slayer, Balance, Fury, Cosmetic. I actually really like this helmet. This one, I mean, this one is, that's uh, all right. Okay, yeah, those skins look good. I think, I think these are gonna sell really, really well over here. Uh, Slayer, Balance, Fury stuff, end game raid updates. Uh, so what are they, what are they doing here? The updates apply to Vault and Vi Vicus, Kakul, Sidon, and Brashaza. Updated entry limits in gold. Oh, so we got the KR thing where you can do as many raids as you want a week now. You can do as many raids as you want. You can choose to receive or not receive gold rewards before entering a raid. Even if you decide not to claim the gold rewards, other rewards such as honing materials and legion raid craft materials can still be earned. So players can literally bust now outside of main six. Yeah. Well, technically, yeah, technically you could bust more now, right? Uh, each character can earn gold awards uh, three times per week up to six. View more awards. No, I, I didn't know about this. I actually, I didn't know about this. Uh, view more awards. Uh, after six characters are looted gold rewards and other characters can choose to claim the view. Guys, you want to know how it was? I'll tell you guys. Okay, so we went to the Amazon Games uh, Studio, right, to work on our project. We all signed NDAs, right? And while we're doing this, you know, like obviously there's information around like regarding this up Date, right i wasn't i wasn't really trying to look at it but you guys want to know what stoops was like this was stoops the entire time every single time like henry was like working on his laptop stoops like this like, that, that was that was that was literally stoops right you'd literally catch him you'd catch him like peeking at the laptop from like all different angles non-stop trying to like read the patch notes early and Henry would turn around. And he's like, "What the fuck are you doing, Stoops?" And he's like, "Oh, you know, you like try to play it off, and like they would like talk about something." <laughs> well, that was basically Stoops like our entire trip, bro. He was trying to, he was trying to, he was trying to peek at stuff, but he couldn't say anything because he had an NDA. 
So it didn't really matter, right? Probably, but he was, he was, he was, he was being all nosy and stuff. He was trying to peek at everything. Uh, raid balance change. What else we got? So it made some raid changes, right? They said they're going to make, uh, what they're just going to like, probably like change white patterns and stuff. Uh, Argos Abyss Raid. Improve the pattern of transferring solar energy and lunar energy to Argos so that the conditions required for transferring are more visible. Okay. I guess that's kind of good. You should like, what, what will you do, right? If you have the supports not hit the boss. And then they even it out at the last minute. That's usually how you do it. Players also receive significant damage instead of wiping the party. So you don't have a white pattern anymore either. You, so I guess you could also just time stop it too. Oh, these are just like the mechs, like where you peek off the side, right? To see like where the safe spots are and stuff. Oh, and then all the gate three white patterns. So the daylight, the raining, and the nighttime phase are no longer white patterns. It's just significant damage. So, yeah, they pretty much just, uh, yeah, they removed all the guaranteed white mechanics. And they just made uh, the raids not as punishing for new players. This is, is going to help new players get into raids a little bit easier. And you're still going to learn, like, the basic fundamentals, right? Because, like, when you learn Argos, like, really the only thing you want to take away from that is how times three works. You hope these stop buses. Well, I think with these changes, people will be less inclined to bust because the raids are less punishing yeah and pizza mech yeah and pizza mech so times three and pizza mech that's really all you really want to take away from argos though uh people will still bust though vault and legion raid and in effect allows player to visually check absorb energy in the pattern of uh the absorbent energy so soaking the balls after using the pattern of throwing an axe from there twice before the outer wall was destroyed the triple dash attack was updated to have short intervals uh, when the pattern doing three counterattacks vaulting consecutively fails, the character receives significant damage instead of death. Oh yeah, that, that's like the rare pattern. That's a rare pattern that you never see. And like in, in hell mode, it's like the five times interrupt pattern. What a lot of people do, right, is they'll just interrupt the last one. Be that it silences you and then like the silence spreads to other people. You never even see that pattern really anymore, right? Reduce the damage uh, when uh, the pattern of blocking vaulting or collecting mana blue orbs fail. Now they're not nerfing inferno mode. It's only, it's only normal mode and stuff charging for an argos bus is cringe anyway people can make more money in game they do it vicus what do you do to vicus though uh the changing color types of orbs have been reducing uh the pattern of guiding orbs to the dimensional gate and improving the ability initial place for orbs were created when the pattern of stopping incubus uh, morphe and blocking them from absorbing orbs getting hit by the circular donut shaped pattern summoned by norphy across the battle arena results in significant damage instead of death when players need to find a safe zone in one of the cardinal directions a player receives significant damage instead of death and decrease the damage and modify the hit effects of various patterns when fighting both uh, bosses i actually didn't expect them to decrease the damage because gate one isn't really like too damage heavy besides in purple phase. So nerf in purple phase. I didn't expect them to do other phase damage. And then they diminish the effect a lot of the wipe effects. So it looks like things are gonna be time stoppable and you could probably bust what gate one two now. When the character is attacking by a pattern predicts Vika's illusion attack after acquiring red and purple energy generated Vika's, the character receives significant damage instead of death. Wait, so you don't have to like actually go to the right wing location that you could still survive? So you could just like technically, if you're just lazy, you could get hit by the first attack in the middle not move and then time stop the next two attacks i wonder if yeah i wonder if you could just tank it straight up on gunlancer too prove the hallucination sword pattern so some players covetous meter will change while the pattern is in process like this will no longer use a counter attack oh so it's just gonna give like one or two people above 70 so you don't have to listen to the the moaning sound for the vicus on the 50 51 players will now be able to inflict damage to the giant covetous lump uh, regardless of their meter wait really damn they really they really made uh they really made a vicus a lot more new player uh friendly remove the four orb pattern oh you don't have to do the spam clicking anymore decrease the damage covetous monsters inflict upon contact increase the amount of covered meter gained periodically during the zero mech stagger mechanic and vicus will no longer open a single wing and the medusa pattern wait so either no one looks or two people looks but everyone does time stops that anyways yeah so essentially you just always just like yeah you just time stop uh cat will seed on remove the paralysis effect when hit by the cross laser pattern shooting from the player with uh mayhem meter 50 and above it wasn't that long a paralysis effect was it increase the time between dice throw and card shooting in gate one only only like new uh on item level people really see this mech but it is one of the mechs that people struggle with the most while learning the raid right like new players struggle with this hard like doing your red red black black and then learning like when to enter intercept one to kite it how to kite it there that's nice decrease uh, gate two decrease the damage cat cool 
deals when the boss spins in a certain direction. So this mechanic right here is actually really deadly. So, you know, you have your interrupt patterns on clown raid. And if you hit that interrupt pattern right, you can't interrupt certain patterns again. This spin, sometimes based off your position, you can't interrupt it. It'll cue the spin again and it'll like put you against the wall or it'll knock you like, yeah, like it, it, does, it does a lot, a lot of damage on item level. It could kill you extremely, extremely quickly. So this is actually one of the more deadly basic attacks that Cool, Cat cool has outside of getting knocked off from the yellow box. Increase the time for counterattacking when Cat Cool flips. Oh, I felt like it was pretty easy. Easy to do that, but yeah, sure, making counters easier for people is good, I guess. It's like when he like goes like into like Exodus mode, right? And he's like he's like crawling on his hands, like all creepy and shit. Increase the time for show uh showing pre-attack boundaries and some pattern that added additional pre-attack boundaries. Pre-attack boundaries, so it's like better visual cues. Prevent get cool from repeating the pattern where he throws the ball in the air consecutively. Get cool will not cast air bomb pattern when the boss's HP is high. How many times have you guys had the transition when both Cat Cool and Sadon spawn? and he gets done moving and then he goes directly into bomb pattern again and you're trying to burst there, right? You hit your burst window and then you're, like he goes up and again, and you're like, what the fuck? Why are these spamming the up mechanics twice in a row? Sometimes three in a row. You're like, I got this curse seed. This this is like, this is gonna reduce people's blood pressure. A uh, gate three when rooming Sunday buff while uh, crossing the fourth blade execution while players completing the platform level, the message can operate level will appear applying on all difficulties. I can't tell you how many times, boys, people just run to this fucking thing. Even in teaching raids, I tell them, Guys, you gotta run over the lever and do the typing test and they just like run to the boss. So I guess they're just gonna have a visual indicator for them to operate the lever or they just don't see it. There's been there's been a couple instances of me doing clown teaching where they, they know there's a lever, but they couldn't find it. That will say it on will no longer get the flowing mayhem effect. The grotesque doll will no longer be affected by taunts. This is actually nice for a destroyer and gun lancer because if you guys didn't know, if you taunted while near the boss and you hit the totem, it would stop flame then it just it essentially wipe you if there's no other way to get your gauge so now you like if you're playing any taunt based class you could sit near the little fire thrower and taunt and you won't cancel it. you just kill a damage uh revamp the dungeon voting system wait what's this uh updated the system message all system uh messaging related to voting continue restart stop have been approved to be more clear it's no longer possible to play the song of escape or song return while a continue advance vote is in progress so the new cooldown to initiate another advance continue vote after one fails change a color the proceed button but what color you guys think is blue purple and then we got some notable bug fixes the last pickaxe swing to not make a sound while mining ore i didn't know that was a thing Fix then she called in stronghold background music tracks within the jukebox to occasionally not emit any audio i've never had that oh artist crane wing or on controller damn how many guys actually play lost ark on controller and maybe maybe more than i think they do that's everything in the may update honestly man this is a pretty good update like it, it doesn't have like a lot of like new content but slayer class is cool and they're doing a lot of good things for like a new player entry point for the game a lot of uh, a, a lot of removing annoyances from the game and just making it more enjoyable to play so you say w patch yeah i think it's really good man decreased uh the stress of honing up the 1460 better express stuff like making like older raids more approachable for new players uh making some of the insta white mechanics just punch Punishing. Uh, it's not a guaranteed wipe anymore. I think these are all good changes for the game. Just because, you know, you had to do stuff the old hard way when you originally did it doesn't mean every subsequent player that enters into the game should be. And this will just make the entry point for the game better overall. For me, the one thing Lost Ark is really missing is some replayable, progressive, maybe skill-based content that you do on a daily basis that you don't have to do and where you can play your main more like see you know, like maybe like something like mythic plus for our game like outside of like your homework and your raids if you want to just play one character and do something you should be able to do that like if lost Ark had a system like that i think a lot more people would enjoy it you know like outside of like doing your raids on your character right so you have a new character it's like your favorite character you got a new main you do whatever you do your weekly raid entries you do your chaos dungeon for the day you do your guardian raid you could do hell mode, you could do PvP, but a lot of people don't like PvP. It also has like a pretty high entry point due to like all the mechanics and stuff. Yeah, but having like some sort of like repeatable PvE content would be nice. Okay, so that's the patch notes there.